Our case study this module is in designing a software application to play blackjack. But before we go too far into the design um, or the code of the software application, we want to look specifically at how we would design a software application. So we're going to look at a process for designing this, a process that you can use to design your own software applications. The rules we're going to use are for two-player blackjack, and they're very simple. We're not going to use things like splitting or insurance. So in black, basic blackjack, each person, uh, a house and a player, is dealt two cards. So let's suppose we deal a player an eight of spades and a seven of hearts. Let's suppose the house gets a two of clubs and a six of spades. We simply add up the points. Any cards from 2 to 10 are worth their face value. Face cards, the jack, king, and queen are worth 10 points each. And an ace can be worth 1 or 11. So this hand totals to 15 for the player. The house has this. Now, a player can choose to stand, in which case he stays with 15 or hit, but the idea is get, getting close as, uh, as close as possible to 21. Let's suppose the player stands, so their total is 15. Now the player doesn't see uh, the house's cards necessarily here, in fact they only see one card that the house will have. Now the house has to take cards until they get 17 or more. So let's suppose the house draws a card, or hits, and let's suppose they get a six of clubs. So now they have 14. They still have to take a card. It doesn't matter what the player has, they don't have 17. Now let's suppose they get an ace of spades. Well, if we count the ace as 11, they've got too much. So we have to count the ace as one point, 3 is 9, so they have 15 points. They must take another card. Let's suppose they take an 8 of clubs. If they get an 8 of clubs, they've now bust because they've gone over 21 points, and so the 15 that the player has wins. The idea is to get closest to 21. If you have a 10-point card and an ace, then that's called a blackjack. You get 21 in two cards with a 10 here. Uh, if you want to look at more rules, just pause the video and refresh yourself uh, on the complete rules uh, because you'll need them if you're designing this from scratch. So let's suppose we were going to deconstruct the whole process of playing blackjack. What I want you to do is think about what are the sort of the basic elements that I can deconstruct this game into? What are those basic modules or activities that have to happen that I can make sort of independent? The idea here is that you're going to try to deconstruct a complex process into smaller processes that are relatively independent um, and so that you can code each one separately. In a team environment you would give different team members each of these small tasks to program. Try to pause this and see if you can come up with four basic things uh, that you do in blackjack. Okay, well let's try to uh, come up with see some of these. Let's see what we, what we come up with. Well, one of the first things we need to do is create a deck, or get a deck of cards, and shuffle them. That's what we would normally do. So that might be one task. We're gonna come up with a few more. Well, we might want to deal a card. And we might want to deal a card to different players. So, for instance, we can deal a card to a player or the house. 
So we have to do that. We then have to, at some point, evaluate of hand. So we might want a program that adds up. Something like this. Adds up the value of the hand. Then we need to somehow find out who won. So we need to evaluate two hands and declare a winner. Now we're not adding betting or anything, so these are sort of four basic functions that we first need to determine before we ever think about coding uh, this program. And this is the deconstruction phase, or I call it the deconstruction phase. We're deconstructing this into somewhat independent modules. And so whenever you're making an application this, that's at all complicated, this is one of the first tasks that you want to undertake. Now, from deconstruction, we then want to move to what I call a black box approach. And by black box approach, I mean that we're going to treat each of these modules, these four modules, we're actually going to uh, create functions for. And we're not at first going to be concerned with how they're going to do the task. That's done inside the black box. We, we don't need to look at this point inside the black box. What we're concerned with is what are the inputs going to be and what are they going to look like? And what should a function return? What are the outputs going to look like? We do this because we want to create a series of black boxes so that the inputs and outputs sort of match up. And by match up, I mean that, let's suppose we look at the first one. The first one was creating a deck. So we'll just call it deck. Well, that should have returned an actual deck of cards. Our second module is to deal a card from the deck. So it needs to take as an input a deck of cards and to return a single card as an output. So what you can see here is that these black boxes we're really only concerned with the input and the output. This in the middle, this is code, and at some point we're going to have to write the Python code. But we want to make sure we organize our, uh, our project in this way so it makes sense. Then, because I've deconstructed it properly, I can look at all these as separate tasks that I can uh, approach one by one. I can um, view them fairly independently. I can code them, and I can test them independently. When we have a module like this we test, we call it unit testing. And we fully test each module before we actually link them together. Now, let's look at how uh, some of this would work in our black box approach. And we're following the book's example. So, there are many approaches you could take to deconstructing this. There's not just one answer. We're deconstructing this the way that the, uh, um, the text that I've looked at has deconstructed it. Um, and we're going to get a certain, uh, a certain output, a certain, I guess, approach to the problem. You could deconstruct this into different modules. As long as you follow the same process, you'll be successful. Well, let's go to the next step in the process. Let's now look at creating our black box in a little more detail. So our first module that we want to create, or our first function, will be called Shuffle Deck. And what does it do? It's going to create a deck of cards, and it's going to return that deck. So what is a deck going to be? Well, first maybe we need to consider what is a card. 
character. So a card is going to be a string. And a card, uh, we can do many things, but in that string it's going to have two characters. We are going to have a rank, for instance, a two is a rank. And for the suit, we could use just a, a character, like C for clubs and H for hearts. Or we could get a little fancier and we could use a Unicode symbol, which is a little more user friendly. We're going to find that the text does this. However, it's just a two character uh, string, and that's what a card is. A deck is comprised of 52 of these uh, strings um, in a list. So it's a list of up to 52. Um, card objects, which are strings. So this is our first black box. Let's look at the next one. The next one deals a card. So what does it take as sort of inputs or arguments? It's going to take as a hand because we're going to pass this card and we're going to place it into a hand. So we need to know um, whose hand we're going to place this card into. We have our deck, which we're taking from here. And the idea is we're going to take the top card, because we've learned about the pop function. We know we can take the top element of a list and remove it. We're also going to return that card, because we might want to print that to give the user some uh, feedback of what was just dealt. That card is then going to be placed into a hand. And although I've put hand here, we actually have two hands. We have either the player's hand or the house hand. So this is just an argument which is either going to be player or house. It'll be one of the two. So we're either dealing a card into the player's hand or into the house hand. Our next module is going to compute the total. It's going to take either the player hand or the house hand, and it's going to add up all the cards. So it's going to add up all the ranks um, according to the rules of blackjack and see if it gets uh, under 21. Actually, it won't matter. It'll, even if it's over, uh, it'll give back a result. Now, if there's an ace in the hand, so if we have 5 and 8, we have another 5, and let's suppose I have an ace. At this point, the strategy is going to be to try to prevent busting. So here we've got 18. If we count this as 11, we would obviously bust. So this will be counted as 1, and the total that's returned will be 19. So that's our function total. It's going to take a hand, either the player hand or house hand. It's going to return a result that we can use uh, later. Finally, we need to compare hands. So here we're going to input two hands because the dealing's all done. The player has a hand, the house has a hand. We're going to consider the two hands and print a message about who won considering the rules of blackjack. And what we're going to output here uh, is simply a printed message. Now the nice thing here is that we've deconstructed this into a series of modules. We've defined the input, what the outputs look like, and on each of these modules, we can perform a unit test. We need to fully test each one to make sure it works. What's also nice is that if we're in a team environment, each of these modules now can be given to a different team member uh, to program. Finally, when all these modules work, we will need to write one more module that takes all these and puts them together, adds a bit more logic, and that's going to be our main function or our main black, we'll just call the main one blackjack. So it's going to call some of these functions, well, it's going to call all the functions at different times. Uh, it's going to use the deck, it's going to deal a series of cards, it's going to have to ask some questions, for instance, uh, as a player, do you want to hit or stand? It'll have to total up 
because one of the players is human, one's the house is the computer, it's going to have to uh, determine what the house hand uh, is in order to know whether it should it needs to uh, take another card or not. Finally it's going to have to when everything is done compare hands, print a message about who won and then end. So we'll have five modules in total. But this is uh, more about the process than it is about coding. It's about deconstructing a complicated project down into simpler modules that can be individually coded. In the next video, we'll take you through the actual coding and you'll create it. But if you're going to do your own uh, application, software application of any type, it's the process that will make you successful or not. It's taking the time to deconstruct this down into modules, planning it out, trying to use this black box approach so you know what your inputs and outputs are to each module before you ever start uh, to code in Python.